Hey everyone, Port ISM, welcome to another review. So today I've got a review um, of a kit and a trans kit of a future project. Now I've got a few of these in the stash and I'm going to go through them all um, because they all do get to, well, they are all planned to be built. Uh, I think it'd be quite interesting to see the base kit alongside the trans kit to see what you get and maybe have a sneak peek at what's involved in the conversion. So today we've got Revels Shelby Mustang GT350 um, and USCP's GT500 Ellen Nor something or other, I think it is. Uh, you've got to be very careful over that name because Disney's got the copyright on that. From the Gone in 60 Seconds franchise, well, film. And I know for a fact uh, Chris of Beers for Builds was building an Ellen or something or other. Ellen, Ellen, something or other, um, version of his own car kind of thing, and the Disney legal team got involved and took the car off him. <laughs> so I believe they're quite stringent on this. You gotta be very careful using that name. So we're gonna call this Ellen or something or other. Ellen or Ellen or something. Can't remember what it is now. Anyway, you get my drift, don't you? So this is like a twenty twenty two pound Revel kit. The trans kit cost me £100. It's not cheap at all, uh, but you do get quite a bit in the box. So let's jump straight in. We'll have a look at the kit first, and then we'll go through the uh, trans kit and then come back and have a little bit of a talk about it all at the end. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so we'll start off with the kit. This is Ravel's 124th Shelby Mustang GT50H, which I believe is the Hertz Ranta car. Is that correct? I believe it is. So we're not going to build this. We're going to build the Ellen or something else version. Um, but we're going to go through the kit box. I have a very quick look. I'm not going to dwell on this. Um, but we'll have a quick look what we get. It's never even been opened, the kit. So I've never even looked at it, which is very, very unusual for me. But hey, it is what it is. And then we'll get to the detail upset and see what we got in there. So typical Revel boxing, side opening, really annoying. Revel instructions, all neatly packaged in one giant bag. So it's a bit of a bugbear, but generally the parts tend to survive quite well because they are multi-bag. But it is what it is. Right then, so we've got the body shell, put tyres in, got a chrome sprue, we've got a, a sprue the steering wheel bonnet, etc. on the chassis, engine parts, exhaust, cockpit tub seats, and the engine itself, and some glass. Exactly what we're going to need out of the kit. I am not 100% sure just yet. Um, We'll find that out as we get to it. So let's have a very quick look. Like I say, I just want to go through the kit. Um, this is a future project, so I kind of want to look at everything, but I don't want it to be a hugely long review. And for me, the main focus is to look at that trans kit. So this body is not going to get used. This can become a test piece now. So tyres are there. I don't even think we need those. But typical Revel fashion, unbranded. Not bad tread on them. All four identical. So not a whole lot there really to look at. Decent quality, so you can't really complain. Body shell. Obviously the hood, bonnet, whatever you want to call it, is moulded separately. Body's quite clean, actually. Actually quite a nice clean body. All the scribe lines, or the panel lines, are actually pretty well defined. It's pretty clean. Can't see a huge amount of cleanup. There's bound to be some parts in need sticking on front and rear, which we'll see when we'll through the instructions. So overall, by these typical Revel, actually pretty clean, very quick cleanup, a couple of seams here and there across the back, as you always know. 
There's a seam from front to back, quite often hidden in the panel line. So not a huge amount of cleanup required there. We've got a sprue with our engine on it, uh, subframes and suspension. And it looks like a firewall there as well. Let me zoom in a touch. So normal, typical stuff from Revel there. We've got the rear leaf springs, rear differential, drive shaft, prop shaft, whatever you want to call it. Again, all really nicely molded. Really nice. Don't got a bit of texture on the engine, on the gearbox. Everything's pretty well defined, to be fair. So I can't see there being any issues there with that little lot. Next sprue is the tub, cockpit tub, which we are going to use in the kit. Seats, which I think we use as well. The exhaust, we don't use, I don't think. And these are the front and rear parts that would glue onto the kit body shell. So they need to be probably glued in place and the seams filled in as well. So a little bit of work there. We've got the dashboard there as well, which again, I think we'll use on the kit. It's a 1985 kit. You know what? For an 85 kit, it's a kit. 85 kit, 1985 kit. It's actually pretty well molded, to be fair. So, cockpit tub looks all right. I know we're going to use some of this. I can use the door cards there and then cutting off. But I think we actually used a base tub in there. Accelerator pedals, uh, floor, uh, footwell, uh, mat are molded in place. But I think they might come as separate parts. Seats, just your basic seats. Again, I think we use those in the kit as well, so no issues there. So we've got the chassis, which we are using, but I know a part needs cutting out because I've seen it when I look through the detail upset. Chassis detail, pretty standard Revel stuff, a fuel tank's molded in, it's textured in places. Um, get a paint, so give it a dry brush, give it a bit of interest, it looked quite good. We've got some engine components, radiator, auxiliary, auxiliary belts, the steering column with the shifter, I'm assuming it is. Is this a auto three on the tree, whatever the hell you call it? Wheel parts, the headers, exhaust manifolds, again, whatever you want to call them, and another subframe, and it looks like a starter motor there as well. And again, all crispy molded, got some suspension shocks there. They're a bit ropey looking, but other than that, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the fan here. Looks a bit odd. But overall, nothing too dramaistic dramaistic we're making stuff up now in there uh the bonnet hood again we're not going to use it but again just needs a little bit of clean up there's a few molding parts on the front that need cleaning off just to keep it nice and neat two different shifters a bit of flash on the shifters which is a bit of a shame we've got two scoops for behind the doors uh we've got what looks like uh Hmm, I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to look in the instructions. Steering wheel, which is quite nice to be fair, but we get one in the kit. Uh, and again, a bit of flash on this one. This one's obviously been uh, quite overused over the years because there's quite a bit on that one. But wisps of flash that takes me a second to get rid of. So on kits this cheap because it's like a twenty odd pound kit, really heavy. Um, I kind of let it slide a bit. It was like a £50 new new kit or, you know, a 30 40 quid Tamiya kit. I think it's a little bit unacceptable. But on kits like this, I mean, this kit's, what, 1985? So it's like only seven years younger than me at the end of the day. So it's like 35 years old plus. Um, so that's not too bad at all. Clear parts. Now, I know we definitely I think we use some of these on the kit. But I'm not sure what. Uh, we'll have a look at instructions, but to be fair, clear parts aren't bad, to be fair. They're actually quite good, nice and clear. Bit, distortion, bit of distortion in there. The clarity's good, they're clean, there's no marks on them. So, more than usable there. Spot on. Light lenses are good, quarter uh, windows, again, pretty decent, so... No issues there with the glass, so if we do have to reuse that, uh, I'm not going to be particularly worried until we get a fit of it to the resin, because we're using a resin body on this, and those parts don't want to go in there. There you go, get in there, out of the way. So what the fit's going to be like on that, I don't know. We'll find out when we get to it. So, chrome parts. Let's have a look. Mm, chrome's a bit heavy. A bit distortion here and there. Wheels are all right. The grill looks all right. This would all be stripped. I'd strip 
and repaint this for sure. Got all sorts of components on there. But if you just wanted to leave it, give it a bit of a matte coat or a semi-gloss coat, and it'll take some of the toy-like look off it, but it's a bit thick. You can see in places where it's definitely um, thicker than it needs to be. Uh, again, what we're going to use, I have no idea. We're not going to know until we come to the build. But overall, chrome, typical Revel chrome. Now, one point of this that a lot of people complain about over the years is the decals, especially the hood decal, the bonnet decal. I think it's this one. Apparently, it's very tricky to get in place. So what it's like, I don't know, but it was definitely me. I would snip that right down the middle. So you've got two halves. But overall, those decals look really, really nice, to be fair. So I would probably grab another one of these and do the kit version. So I've got a spare set of decals, which is always good to have. But I know a lot of people think I've had trouble with this one. But definitely cut that one. And then I'm assuming those two halves go there. So I'll be honest. I would probably spray the stripes over the roof and the bonnet, and I'd use these on the side. I'd just try and match a gold to it, just to make life a little bit easier. Because looking at the way the decals go over, I think that's going to be a little bit tricky. But those decals look really nice. No real thickness to them. Really nice depth on the metallic tone. They're really good. So, top marks revel. Well done. So we'll keep those safe. Instructions, we're going to have a very quick look through. Typical Revel instructions, they're awful paint codes, which really do get on my nerves because if the paint was called A, you get to know that eventually that was aluminium or you know E was metallic 91. Changes every kit, so you never know what colour you've got to actually physically look and it gets a bit tedious after a while. Uh, we've got your sprue layout, uh, your sprue parts there, I'm going to pop that up there, sprue parts are there, so you can have a quick glance and see everything, and it's typical... Revel instructions all the way through. Typical Revel drawing. Nice, clear, and concise. They are actually really nice instructions, those. Very clear. All the parts are well labeled. All the colors are labeled out there where decals are required. Fitment looks like it's pretty straightforward. And then you've got your decal layout there as well. So, overall, the kit doesn't look bad, to be fair. I know a few people have complained about it, but I think sometimes. You've got to take it with a pinch of salt. I mean, I complained about the BMW M6 from Nunu. Yeah, I've seen dozens of people build it. So it might have been me off an half day. Um, it might just me not enjoying the kit, whatever. But overall, I think that that kit doesn't look too bad. And like I say, we're using it as a donor kit. So we don't need all of it anyway. So we're going to figure out what we need when we come to use this bad boy. And this is what we're here to see today. Well, it's what I'm here to see. So this is the USCP Shelby GT500 Custom that makes the Ellen or something in Corolla kit. can't remember what it is now. I can't say the name. I'm not allowed to. Um, there's a very strong copyright on that name, so I'm not going to utter it because I want my video to stay up. Um, so, yeah, uh, I bought this. It's not cheap, about £100. Um but it looks pretty decent. At the end of the day, this is a beautiful looking car um, out of a film Gone in 60 Seconds, which I watch other night for some inspiration. So let's have a look what we get in here. Now, Gary Ride the Wind is building one currently on ISM in a sterling job he's doing. So again, we're going to have a quick look through and everything. We're not going to analyze every single part because, again, I don't want to be here all day. But we're certainly going to have a look at what's in the box and what do you get for your hundred pounds so first off dominating the box is a giant resin body shell so this looks pretty decent now it's going to need to go over and i would certainly try and remove some of the imperfections in the body which there are a few there's definitely some raised points so this will get a hit over with one of my ump sponges there's a couple of panel lines going to need a little bit of depth adding to them to give a bit more definition to them. Uh, and there's a couple of flaws here and there where there's some excess resin to clean up, like on that wheel arch there. You can see right there, hopefully, there's a bit of extra resin which you don't want. And then on the back, it's a bit ropey here as well, as you can see. 
Well, that can be cleaned up. Um, overall, I think the resin looks pretty decent. It's quite nicely cast. Like I said, it's going to need a good clean up with a sponge to get rid of all the imperfections and then a good wash with some nice hot soapy water and a toothbrush to get it up to uh, ready to be in prime. So overall, body shell looks good. The shape looks good. It's a beautiful car, this. Um, and we are going to do it in the pepper silver grey colour as well with the iconic black stripes. It's got to be done in that colour, hasn't it, from the film? Um, so yeah, I think the body shell is good. Like I say, it's a bit ropey in areas. It could have been better. Um, but it is what it is. This is the thing with resin. You, you know you're going to have a bit of work, so you're going to have to check things fit, like the hood, the bonnet, uh, the engine bay. You've got to make sure all that fits in place. So quite a bit of dry fitting, but this will be thoroughly sanded and then cleaned and washed before primer. So that is the main part of the resin kit. We've got instructions. Well, if you can call them that. Then we've got a big bag of resin. And I'm going to zoom in for this one. If I can get all this out without wrecking everything. So, like I said, we're going to use some aspects of the plastic kit. And, well, all the resin. So, what we use is depicted on the picture of the instruction sheet. Uh, if you can call it that. So, we got the replacement bonnet. Again, nicely cast. Again, getting a nice bit of clean up. Good clean. Very careful trimming because the bonnet uh, hinges are moulded in here. So um, I think I'll get the plug off and then we'll work at this separately. Raise us all these bits, sand them out nicely and then we'll be ready to go. So there's the tr the hood, whatever you want to call it. We've got the engine bay here, which obviously replaces um, the one on the kit. So uh, obviously we're not using the plastic kit, so we need to add one. So this goes inside the resin. Again, nice bit of detail in there. Quite a flimsy, flexible part. You need to be careful with that one. And gluing this in place. So, CA glue I'd normally use, but I wouldn't want to commit to putting this in in case later on down the line you have problems with fit issues. So I'd probably PVA this in or UV it from the outside so I can get it back out should I require. So that's something we'll look at. But again, nicely molded. The battery's there. We've got a reservoir of some sort. Uh, so once you get the engine in, that should look really good as well. We've got door cards because, as I say, the kit door cards will come off and these will go on. Again, you're going to need some very careful trimming and clean up. Uh, pretty straightforward on that one, to be fair, but you just need to be careful and make sure you follow the uh, definitive edges of these parts and don't ruin them all. Exhaust, again, very, very tricky part to clean up. We need to get that plug off and then work at this because they will snap really easily it's a real shame it's been malt cast like this but i guess it is what it is and we'll clean it up so it's pretty thin so it's a case get that off scribe it with a knife uh cut it away and sand it so it's not the end of the world it just makes life a bit more tricky we've got some silencer boxes there as well uh, and the exhaust tips too and again careful clean up you have to be very careful with these parts uh, but i think once you get them done they shouldn't be too bad now the moulding's not perfect, the casting's not the best. I'm going to have to say that for the price point, I've seen a lot better resin cheaper. Um, and that's me being totally honest. But it is what it is. I know I'm going to get myself into with this kit. It's not going to be a Tammy kit to build or even a Revel kit to build. It's going to take quite a bit of work. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to get a very unique um, model out of it. And it's going to look pretty awesome, I hope. It looks anything like Gary's. We'll be on to a winner. Um, uh, yeah, away you go. And then on here we've got a... Oh, right. I don't know what this is. It's some sort of radiator, something or other. We've got a sump and the two um, cam covers. Head, uh, what would you call these? Um, you're all screaming at me now. I just called them cam covers, me. There with the Cobra. Power by Ford logo in. Again, some careful cleanup there, and you'll be all good to go. We've got a bag under here. Part two. So in here, we have the intakes for the side. So you to go on the body. So again, careful cleanup is going to be required. Dashboard. We don't need the dashboard. We've got a much nicer resin one here to go in. That's really nice. Very nicely cast. Very pretty. 
We've got fuel cap, mirrors, door handles. Again, they're all going to require some very careful cutting off and trimming. So, not a problem there at all. Very nice fuel filler cap there, actually, if I can get it to focus. Really cool. Then we've got a steering wheel, which has got one of the ludic most ludicrous. <sighs> we have to clean up all that from inside there. And somehow keep all that together. That's going to be real fun to do. Steering columns here. And a few other parts as well, which have dropped off. That I'm not 100% sure what they are. So get us that later. And two lights as well in resin. So not bad at all. I'm going to pop all those just over there out of the way. Get them back in their bags later. Now the wheels. The wheels are really nice. Um, I like the wheels. I'm only going to grab one and then I'll grab the, the knock-ons as well. So the knock-ons there, there should be four. One's loose in the bag. So again, you're going to need some very careful clean-up on those. Using a knife and a sander and a bit of time and patience. But the wheels are good. I've got two of them there. The wheels are really nicely cast. I do like the wheels. They do look really, really good. So they're going to look very, very pretty. The other catering point on the back. Um, so not sure how that's going to go along. But it is what it is. We'll get them in place. So very nice wheels. Let's get those back in there. And then the tyres. I'm going to look at the tyres while we're here. And again, I'll just grab one. Four tyres. And these aren't bad either. These are marked with... Potenza. Did I say Potenza? No, it doesn't really say anything, so you can't really make out what it says. There's a marker on the side. They do fit quite well. I popped one on the other day. You're going to need a bit of a trimming with a knife to get rid of some of the excess rubber, but the tyres aren't bad. The tread's not bad on them. Uh, it could be a lot worse, because parts like this are quite hard to, to do. It's an aftermarket, non-commercial kind of level. Because you're doing them as you go. So they're just cast probably by hand. So there's them. We've got clear parts here. Which is always a bugbear in resin. But these are headlight covers. So I don't think these would be too bad. And tail lights. So we've got the tail lights there. It's actually pretty decent. To be fair. Don't look bad. Some careful paint in there. And the headlights. And a few other components there as well so they're more than adequate not too bad at all pop all that away in there then we're on to this so we've got a rear window template here with a sheet of acetate so you put that up and cut that off ready to go so that's for the rear window i mentioned the front so i'm assuming using the kit one we do get some decals in the kit but i'm going to paint mine uh, probably bar the GT500 logo on the side. I don't know yet. We'll play that one by ear. The decals look really good, actually. Designed by decalshop.ru, which I think is a custom printing service, if I remember right. Decals look really, really good. Very nice. There's some instruments on there, some Shelby logos, and a whole multitude of stripes. It looks like you might get a couple of sets there, dear. I can't quite tell. I'm not sure, but the decals do look good. Very nice. Uh, we've got some photo etch in there and some seatbelt material. I can get this out of here. There we go. So we've got some black 2mm ribbon for the seatbelt and then we've got a couple of frets of PE. So this one here has got like bonnet pins, fuel caps around, Shelby logo, uh, badges, the, the license number plate. Uh, looks like a key, keyholes, so on and so forth. And this one's got the window wipers, the centre of the steering wheel. We saw the resin bit before. Air filter covers, some grills, our pedals as well. Um, and that's it. So that is all the parts on the kit. Now the instructions, and I do say instructions with the loosest sense because they are pretty dire to be honest, is consisted of this. And this. And that's it. Nothing else. So, <laughs> you're going to cut this off the chassis to get it to fit. 
um, to install the exhaust pipes, leaving that. Shows you how to assemble the steering column with the uh, rev counter on it, I'm assuming. How to assemble the steering wheel itself. And then put the pedals in. They go on the existing pedals on the floor pan itself. Uh, resin gear shifter knob. I didn't see that in that bag before. Oh, yeah, it is there. There it is. Okay. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, resin hair filter. Air filter? There's an air filter. Am I going mad? I've not seen a resin air filter. It's not that thing, is it? No, can't be. That might be. <laughs> Maybe it is. I have no idea. I'll look at that later. Uh, clear resin parts, uh, mirrors, my view. No mention of the front screen, so I'm assuming you use the screen out of the kit. Don't know. Uh, like I say, not the best instructions. Not very in depth. I know there's a video build on YouTube of this already, so I always look at that for reference. Um, but this will be a build we do in hopefully the near future. So there we go. Let's go back to me and let's have some thoughts of what we think. Okay then, so thoughts. Right. Okay. So the base kit itself looks pretty decent, to be fair. Uh, the body's nicely molded. Um, the body's actually going to become a guinea pig for something. I'm going to make a video on in a couple of days. Um, so that is ready to be painted. Stand by on that one. Um, we're going to use the rest of the kit for the trans kit, obviously, as the donor parts. Like I said, the base kit itself looks good. Typical Revel, exactly what you'd expect to find in a £20 um, Revel kit box. Uh, kit's going to go together okay. It's going to have some flaws, it's going to have some issues, but overall, for the price point, it's going to be an okay model kit. And I know a few people have complained about the decals on it. There's an easy way around that. Just paint them on. So much easier. And I will buy another one of these um, because the base kit looks good and it's still a good-looking car as well. Um, so when I come to it, I will more than likely paint on the stripes. So the base kit looks good. So that's a good start. The trans kit now... There's two points on this. What does it look like quality your eyes and is it worth the price? So at £100, it's a lot. It really is. But you do get quite a bit in the box. You've got decent decals. You've got some P in there. You've got a full resin body, a nice set of resin wheels and tyres, plus all the other ancillary parts, the door cards, dashboard, steering wheel, all that stuff in there. Is it worth £100? That is one of those questions where... Only really you can answer that. <clears throat> and for me, it is pretty expensive, but looking at some of the other trans kits I've bought, which you're going to see further on down the line, I don't think it's bad really, because I paid £50 for a hobby design one, and there's about six pieces of resin in there, and that's about it, a little bit of PE. So for what you get in that box, I think it is worth the money personally. There's going to be people that watch and think, I'm not paying that for that, but... That's how it works with things. There's people who go and buy a Ford because they don't buy a Mercedes. There's people buying Mercedes because they like the quality car. So it, it's one of those things. Only you can judge if it's worth that. Now, quality-wise, all the smaller parts of resin looks to be quite well done. There's a few parts that look a little bit iffy in places where they've been cast. Um, and some of the cleanups are going to be challenging about breaking some of the parts. But with some care and patience, I think it would be just fine. The biggest bugbear I've got is the body shell. There's a few flaws on that that shouldn't be there, really. Um, they are fixable and shouldn't be too much of a drama to do. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't be there. So that's my opinion. It's worth the money, but there's some flaws on the body that shouldn't be there. But we can fix it. We'll get through it. And Gar like I say, Gary Rad the Wind is building this right now over on our SM Facebook page. Um, so you can go and have a look at that. I'll be doing mine in the pepper. Is it pepper grey, pepper silver? Pepper grey. We're going to do it in the movie scene. I watched a film the other day just for a bit of inspiration. And it's such a stunning looking car. We've got to do it in that colour. So I've got the paints from Gravity Colour Spain there ready. And we'll build this sometime in the future. So you want to go see build of it now. Go see Gary's build over on ISM Facebook. Uh, and have a look at that. Gary's doing a great job of that. So you can go over there and see that. Uh, if you've got the base kit, if you've got the trans kit, let me know in the comments down below and let me know your thoughts on it as well. So as I said, this will become a project, I'm going to say this year, uh, hopefully we'll get it fitted in this year, 
and we can see this beautiful car it is a stunner of a car um come alive and you'll see me use a trans kit on the channel i've got other ones to review i've got an r32 skyline one i've got the tommy mackinan conversion I've got the evo 6 and there's a few others i want to get as well and i've got a few uh hopefully a few resin kits in the pipeline as well that we can have a look through and build at a future date as well there we go if you'd like to support future content uh, and videos there's a patreon me link in the description down below and a paypal me link as well and any and all support is greatly received because without that support i can't continue making these videos it really is as simple as that so thank you for everybody that does uh it's much appreciated like i say if you've got the kit let me know in the uh comments down below interested to hear everybody's thoughts on it and leave a comment subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up and hit that bell notification I might not reply to every comment, but I do read and heart every single one and appreciate every person that takes the time to leave a comment and give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever way you're inclined. So there we go. Check out Sasha Scar Model Facebook page on forum, umpretail.com. Uh, my poor ISM Facebook page where you can see all my personal modeling work shared. Check out the live of the group. Uh, sorry, they'll have the bench page off their hangout group and the ism gb page as well links to everything anything and everything are in the description to this video if you scroll down you'll find near enough everything in there um so there we go hope you enjoyed that i've got more of these lined up to come over the next few weeks and i've got a few more in the pipeline i'd like to get as well um yeah there we go thanks for watching enjoy the rest of your day take care everybody bye bye